Spike, why do you like Premiere Pro? Hmm? Oh. <laughs> Hey, what's up you guys? It's Premier Gal here and you guys submitted questions using the hashtag AskGal for my 10,000 subscribers celebration giveaway. Yes! Oh, and here's Premier Pup here. We have reached 10,000 subscribers. It's so exciting that we've built this community together of learning and uh, my partners have been awesome and they actually donated some items that you guys can win. So at the end of this Ask Gal, I'm going to announce the winners. And the prizes include two Logic keyboards, which are about $150 each. And they're for Premiere Pro and they're backlit. And it's they're pretty great. I use one in my editing setup. And um, a Sapphire unit with Boris FX, as well as a one year free membership with Soundstripe for music for your video. And the other uh, prize is Film Convert. So let's go ahead and go through some of the questions that you guys ask. So I have my iPad here where I'm gonna read the questions. And the first question that was submitted was from Alex Lopez. He said, at premiere underscore gal, iMac or MacBook Pro, hashtag ask gal. I think it's good to have a desktop, you know, editing space as well as a mobile editing space. I have a MacBook Pro at home and a Mac Pro in the office. I don't actually have an iMac, but I would probably, if I had to choose, would choose an iMac because the MacBook Pro is limited to just 16 gigabytes of RAM. So when I'm trying to do some like heavy motion graphics on my MacBook Pro, it kind of lags. So the iMac can go up to 32 gigabytes and the iMac Pro that's coming out in December, I'm really excited about that. So I would choose the iMac, Alex. All right, so the next question is from Unmeshedinda at Piximperfect. He wrote, Hashtag ask Al, what do you do when Premiere starts to lag? That's a great question, Unmesh. And generally what I do is I empty the media cache first. Usually if it's lagging, it must mean that there's not a lot of space and there's a lot of temporary files, which is what your cache is that Premiere Pro created that basically connect back to the original footage inside of Premiere Pro. So a lot of those files aren't being used anymore because they're from previous projects. So you need to go up to preferences go to media cache and click on clean cache. And you also will be able to probably detail how, how much space you want the cache to take up before it cleans itself. And usually I just restart my entire computer and then um, open it up and everything should be good after that. So hopefully that helps unmesh. The next question from Vicky Ryder, um, at Queen of CBR wrote, um, what is sort of easy, affordable, organized ways to show clients videos for feedback with least inconvenience to them? I use a couple different review platforms with my clients because I can't meet face to face with them. A lot of them are in different countries or they're so in another state and they can't review it with me face to face. So what I use is a platform called Webster and it allows you to upload a certain amount of videos per month and you send it to them and the clients, based on the feedback that I've gotten from them, they really like it because it's very intuitive. All you do is you click on the part of the video at the specific time in the time code and leave an annotated uh, comment there about what you want changed and then I get notified because Whipster has a panel inside of Premiere Pro so I get that and I'm able to make sure that I'm checking off all the feedback from them. And I've used other platforms called Frame.io, which I think is a little bit cheaper. However, it's not as clean as an interface as Whipster. So that's the reason why I stick with Whipster. I think it's a better product and it ultimately will make your client more happy, I think. And the price of it, you can try to integrate that into the price of your entire, entire uh, video service. So if you have a detailed breakdown of how you sort of bill your clients, you can include a video review fee if you want. So that's one way to go around the pricing. Another question from at Auto Magic Alley asked, how and where do you store all your huge video files? Hashtag ask gal. So I actually work entirely off of external hard drives. I rarely actually have projects on my internal drives unless I have like a one terabyte hard drive, but a lot of my programs take up most of the space. And because video files are so huge, they will basically eat up your entire internal hard drive. So I work off of a couple different 
Lacy ter uh, like one terabyte and four terabyte portable rugged drives. And I usually work on the projects that I'm currently working on on those drives. But once I'm done with them, I have a, Mer a Mercury Elite Pro OWC four bay rated hard drive that you can, I think, add up to about 32 terabytes. And you basically insert four different 3.5 inch drives. And the rated stands for redundant array of independent disk. And what that does is it actually makes your data redundant on those four different drives. So that way, if one of them fails, the data is saved on another drive instead. So it's just a better way of protecting your, your data. So I would highly recommend getting some sort of bigger storage unit as well as little portable drives that you can use uh, to save your video files. And lastly, question from at Zoe Kizzle at Premiere underscore Gal. Do you have any suggestions of effects similar to Samurai Sharpen that are already built into Premiere? Yes, I do, Zoe. So Samurai Sharpen is a great tool and it has a lot of capability, um, a lot of parameters that you can adjust inside the effects controls, which is why it's a paid for plugin. But the Lumetri color panel inside of Premiere Pro also has a sharpening effect that you can play around with. So it's a, its own entire panel and you can do color correction as well as sharpen your effects there. So you can play around with that and hopefully it'll answer your question. All right, so those are all the questions I had time to answer in this video. And now it's time to find out who won the prizes from the lottery. So I actually have a hat here that I filled with all of the, the submitters all the tweets, and I'm just gonna draw them right now and we'll find out who won. So first I'm gonna do the two Logic Keyboards. So we'll see who is the lucky winner here. Logic Keyboard number one goes to Vicky Ryder. Vicky, woo, you got one Logic Keyboard coming your way. Let's find out who got the second Logic Keyboard. Alex Lopez, you got it, you got it. All right, now let's do the Boris Effects Sapphire unit, which has heaps of lighting effects, transitions. It's fantastic. So whoever gets this, you're gonna have some fun in Premiere Pro. Let's see. Auto Magic Alley, you got the Boris Effects Sapphire unit. So keep an eye out for an email from me. All right, let's see. Film Convert, let's see who gets this one. And Courtney Sid, you get film convert. So now you can add these cool film effects to your video inside of Premiere Pro. Awesome. And last but not least, Soundstripe, music for your video. Let's see who gets it. Anmesh Dinda. Yay, you get the Soundstripe. That's so cool. Awesome. I'm so happy that you guys got those prizes. So thanks so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. And if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe because I make new video production tutorials every week. So you should subscribe to keep up with the video trends. I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.